Well, good morning again. It's now day two of uh, home isolation. So hopefully uh, you got on well yesterday. We'll see how you get on well with it today. Well, we've actually got a new topic uh, to do today. We're actually moving on to some measurements. So in particular, we're looking at meters. That's what the M stands for, centimeters, and millimeters okay now in particular today our work involves converting between the different measurements okay because these can all work together okay we've got meters which is classed as the biggest one centimeters is the next one along and then even smaller than centimeters is millimeters and they can work with each other okay so let's have a look at some different measurements. We'll start with centimetres. So if I had 82 centimetres, okay, now if I wanted to put it in metres, which is a bigger measurement than centimetres, okay, we need to think, well, how many centimetres are in a metre? And this is a key rule, okay, and I'm going to write it just over here. A little rule box for today. Well, what we need to remember is that 100 centimetres equals one metre. Okay, so we always need to remember that because when it comes to changing them uh, from one to the other, we need to know that rule. So 100 centimetres equals one metre. Now, as we look at this number, if we wanted to make this centimetres into a metre, we can clearly see that, well, hopefully you can clearly see, that 82, is it bigger or smaller than 100? Well, it's clearly smaller than 100, okay? So we wouldn't normally convert 82 centimetres into metres. But if we wanted to, okay, if it's less than 100 centimetres and what we can do we bring out some decimals anything that is below 100 centimetres to make into metres we just put a zero point then whatever that number is because what this is saying is anything this side over here of the decimal point is how many meters there are in total. Now, we know that 100 centimeters equals one meter, but we don't have 100 centimeters, so we have zero meters. Then anything after the decimal point on this side is the centimeters that we have. But we don't show it when we write it in metres by writing centimetres. We put 0 0.82 metres. So that's how we can do things that are less than 100 centimetres into metres. That's quite a simple one for us to do. If it is above 100 centimetres, for example, what number should we go with over there, Libby? 314. 314, okay. We have 314 centimetres, okay. 314 centimetres. Well, first things that we need to do, we make it into metres. So we need to have a look. Well, 100 centimetres equals one metre. This number is very clearly above 100 centimetres. So we already know that there are some metre measurements in this centimetre measurement. We need to look how many 100s are in 314. So if we wanted to, we do a bit of place value, we can break it up, okay? This number consists of 300, it consists of a 10 and a 4. So we have our 100s, 10s and units. Now what we can do, we're looking for how many 100s are in it. Now hopefully you know 
that for 300, if we were to do 100 times by 3, we would get to 300, which is just the same as saying 100, add 100, add another 100. So the question asks is how many hundreds are in 300? Well, nice and easy, there are three. So with the concept of 100 centimetres equals one metre, there are three 100s, so we have three metres in this centimetre measurement. But we don't, what, what you need to remember is don't forget what is left over. Don't just think, oh, the answer must be three metres. Because we have 14 centimetres left, okay? Represented here by our 10 in our tens and our four in our units. Now this is where that decimal point comes in. So remember, anything, anything on the left-hand side of the decimal point is the metres. Anything on the right-hand side after the decimal point is the centimetres. We have centimetres left because 14, guess what, is less than 100. So, we just put the 14 there. Make sure you always put your unit of measurement. That is really important, okay? If you don't put your unit of measurement, it could mean absolutely anything. So here we have 3.14 metres. Just like that, we've changed 314 centimetres into metres. So, so far, we've done centimetres to metres. Okay, we can tick that one off. We've done that one. Happy days. Okay, let's just rub off what we have. Next thing we're going to do is millimetres to centimetres. Now, question for you, how many millimetres are in a centimetre? Anybody in the room know? How many millimetres are in a centimetre? Um, ten. Ten. Now, if I could give family group points out over a camera, I probably would. No. Okay, so millimetres to centimetres, there are 10 millimetres in one centimetre. So let's go back to our key box. We have 10 mm equals the same as one centimetre. Okay, so remember, metres is just one m, millimetres, two m's, okay? 10 millimetres equals one centimetre. So, we're converting from millimetres to centimetres. So what we're going to do, if I had, okay, two centimetres, which is nice and easy, okay, that one will straight away, we should know, equals 20 millimetres. Because all we were doing there is times in our key by two, okay? If I had 15 centimetres, okay, and I want to make that into millimetres, I need to think, well, we've got 15, okay, centimetres. 10 millimetres equals one centimetre, okay. How's that going to work? Well, I've just noticed. We're doing this the wrong way around. So let's change it. 150 millimetres, because remember, we're going millimetres and centimetres. Okay, even teachers get it wrong sometimes. 150 millimetres, okay, we're going to go 150 millimetres to centimetres. Now, hopefully, okay, if you if you're switched on and you've had your Weetabix this morning, you've done your morning exercise only around the garden though, then you should already know that I've actually already given you the answer because 150 millimetres, okay, have a look at this. 10 millimetres equals one centimetre. What do we do to get from 10 to one? Now, if you don't know, I'll give it to you, okay? 
we divide that number by 10. Okay, that's how we get that answer. Now, when we divide a number by 10, so here we have 150. Okay, we have 150 divided by 10. This one is nice and simple. One way that I always got taught when I was younger is if it's a nice round number and there's zeros on the end of it, just take the amount of zeros off that there are. There's one zero in 10, as we see there, there's one zero in 50. So we just take that zero off, okay? And the answer would be 15. And just like that, that has worked out what 150 millimeters is in centimeters. So if you watched carefully earlier, you notice that I actually wrote that answer down for you. So let's look at another thought process for dividing by 10, because you may have to come across this. Now, every number that we have, even if it's a whole number, it always has a decimal point, okay, and then it's got zeros recurring. It can go on forever. But because those zeros after the decimal point have no value, we don't actually write them down. So it's a whole number, we just write the whole number down. But from a technical point of view, it does have a decimal point and then lots of zeros. When we're dividing by 10, that decimal point moves one place to the left. Now, let me explain why. Dividing, decimal point moves to the left. Times in, decimal point moves to the right. Because it's dividing by 10, we look how many zeros there are. There is one zero, so it moves one place. If it was dividing by 100, it moves two places. Divided by 1,000, you're getting the gist now, hopefully. It moves three places. But on this one, because it's divided by 10, it just moves that one. The decimal point goes there. Remember, and yet again, after that decimal point, we get rid of that one. It's a zero. Zero has no value, which is why if we wanted to, we could just write the answer as 15. Okay? So hopefully that explains a little bit about doing millimetres to centimetres. Now, next one is going from centimetres to millimetres. This is one that I nearly did earlier without me even noticing, okay? And that would have really confused you, wouldn't it? But here we have centimetres to millimetres. Now, actually, this is basically the complete opposite of what we've just done, okay? Because with this one here, millimetres to centimetres, we divided by 10. So with this one, we're actually going to be times in by 10 because it's still the same. We can switch this round because the equal sign means it's equal both ways. One centimetre equals 10 millimetres. So if I had 12 centimetres, I wrote it down correct this time, 12 centimetres. I want to make that into millimetres. We're doing the opposite. The opposite of dividing, which we did with that question that we just ticked, is, is uh, times in. So we're times in by 10 because of the one zero yet again. So 12 times 10. Okay, that's the sum that we're doing. Yeah, again, something that my maths teacher taught me when I was younger. If you're times in by 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 1 million, any number uh, that goes into that, just look at the zero that you're times in by and add that on. Okay, now that's a bit of a cheat method. It's probably not real maths. But that's just something that for some reason my maths teacher told me about. But let's look at the actual proper maths for it. Okay, so we've got 12 times... 10. When you're doing 12 times 10, okay, there's many different methods that we can do. We can break this number 
up. Okay, so what we've got here in terms of place of value, we have a 10 and we have a 2. Okay, we've got a 10 and a 2. We've broken that up into its place value. We then times each of these numbers by that 10. 10 times 10, if you've been doing your times tables, hopefully you know this, is 100. 2 times 10, something that you should all be able to do in your sleep, is 20. Okay? Then all you simply do is add them two together and you get 100 add 20. Well, funny enough, yet again, just like my weird math teacher's uh, method of adding the zero on, we get the same answer. So 12 centimetres to millimetres would make 120 millimetres. Okay, so that's that one ticked off. Now, we can go from millimetres to metres, and that's the same principle in a way, okay? We are times in it by, well, let's have a look. For going from millimetres to centimetres is times in by 10. Going from centimetres to metres would be times in by 100. So put those two together, would be times in by a thousand. Okay, so if you wanted to do um, millimetres to metres, then you times by a thousand, okay? Now, hopefully some of you won't need to do too much of that today, okay? But some of you older ones may do touch on that a little bit. But I'm fairly confident that having looked at these methods of times by 10, times by 1,000 is the same principle, okay, of uh, doing it. So, hopefully you'll get on well with your work. Don't forget to send it in. Any questions, do send your questions in, okay, and then we can, I can do another video uh, just going over your questions.